And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Ashish Sarkar, the convener of this conference and immediate past president of the Rotary Club of Ann Arbor. This event started as an idea which became a commitment by Ashish to bring it to reality, gathering volunteers, collaborations, and important resource commitments from scores of Rotarians across Michigan and the Midwest. It is from this one kernel of belief that Ashish spread Rotarians near and far that we are here today to talk about peace. Please welcome our fellow Rotarian and incredible convener of people and ideas, Ashish Sarkar. Thank you, thank you. Please, please, please sit down. We are not done yet. Uh, I, am, I am just uh, here to welcome you. And uh, it has been an incredible last year and a half with the, you know, working with my committee that really put it together. So thanks goes to them and we'll thank them officially tomorrow. Uh, good morning. I'm delighted to have all of you here. And I know, you know, we have, uh, uh, we kept adding people to registration despite the fact that we had to close it. <laughs> but, but that happened only this past week. We have 700 people in attendance. And so I hope you enjoy two days here and take back something with you. So at this time, I would like to invite Dr. Mark Schlissel, who is the president of University of Michigan, where you are right now. And he has been there for almost three years now. And he is also a member of our Rotary Club of Ann Arbor. So with that, Dr. Mark Schlissel. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Ashish, for that kind introduction. Uh, as president of the University of Michigan and as a fellow Rotarian, it's an honor to welcome everybody here to the University of Michigan. We are proud to host this important conference with so many leaders from around the world. Today's conference is the latest product of a long partnership between the University of Michigan and Rotary International particularly our wonderful friends, the Rotary Club of Ann Arbor. The club celebrated its centennial in 2016, and we've been proud to host them in the Michigan Union for decades. I'll always remember being inducted into the local club during my first year serving as president. Uh, I am heartened that so many people from around the world have come to our campus for this very important and timely conference. Two days ago, I had the privilege of introducing human rights advocate Radhika Kumaraswamy at a lecture right here in this very room. She formerly served as the United Nations Undersecretary General and Special Representative for Children and Armed Conflict. She discussed the philosophies and history of human rights over the last several decades and the progress and the heartbreak we've experienced as a society. One of the philosophies she's mentioned is particularly applicable today. She noted that the future lies in young people going to the grassroots to create change. With that in mind, I want to extend a special greeting to all of the college and high school students who are in attendance today. It would be difficult to find a more noble way to spend your time than learning about how to bring about world peace. Your presence here gives me, and I'm sure the rest of us, so much hope for our future. Let's give our younger attendees a round of applause. This year is a very special year for the University of Michigan as we celebrate our bicentennial and over 200 years of impact as a public university. And as the Rotary Club of Ann Arbor has been our partner in community impact for generations, I hope all of you will consider the University of Michigan a partner in the quest for world peace. Our two centuries as a university are marked by amazing milestones that demonstrate the commitment of our students, faculty, and staff to peace. U of M's achievements align closely with many of the underlying issues identified by Rotary International as crucial including poverty, hunger, and health, preserving basic human rights, and involving youth in peace and conflict resolution. 
Among our many accomplishments, Michigan was the first university to own and operate its own hospital, the first with a pharmacy school, and the first with a program in human genetics. 62 years ago, the U of M changed the course of human history when Dr. Thomas Francis told the world that the soft polio vaccine was safe, effective, and potent. That announcement followed massive field trials and gave hope to millions of parents and children all around the world. I know that polio eradication is a goal that Rotary International shares very passionately with the University of Michigan. Another wonderful U of M milestone is our role as the birthplace of the Peace Corps. The year was 1960 and a young U.S. Senator from Massachusetts decided that Michigan citizens were the right audience to hear his bold new idea. The Senator's name, of course, was John F. Kennedy, and on the steps of our student union, he announced his idea for the Peace Corps. He said that, and I quote, the university is not maintained by its alumni or by the state merely to help its graduates have an economic advantage in the life struggle. There is certainly a greater purpose, and I'm sure you recognize it. That greater purpose is deeply rooted in our DNA here at Michigan. It's our desire to do good in the world and to help build a better, more equitable, more just, and more peaceful society. Last year, we launched an initiative called Poverty Solutions that's developing, identifying, and testing new strategies for the prevention and alleviation of poverty. The initiative is led by Luke Schaefer, a U of M faculty member, a nationally influential scholar, and co-author of the book, $2 a Day, Living on Almost Nothing in America. Dr. Schaefer is also one of this afternoon's breakout session leaders. Another example of our purpose involves our commitment to international education. U of M led all public universities in the nation this year with 21 students receiving Fulbright grants to teach English and conduct research overseas. This is our 12th year in a row in the nation's top spot. We're also proud to stand up for and protect the rights and opportunities available to all members of our academic community including those who come from other countries to study and do research here at Michigan. For generations, the University of Michigan has been known throughout the world as a leading international community of scholars. We've admitted international students since the late 1840s, and our first foreign-born faculty member was hired in 1846. Our ability to attract the best students and faculty from around the globe enhances everything we do here at Michigan and is in large part responsible for our standing as one of the world's great universities. Teaching, research, patient care, and societal impact are all made better when we can leverage the perspectives and experiences of as many diverse peoples and individuals as possible. We would lose major contributions to our academic excellence if our doors were closed to international scholars. International exchanges also make the world a safer place. When students and faculty come here from other countries, and when our students and faculty go elsewhere around the world, everyone involved benefits by experiencing different cultures and discovering the common aspirations of all of humankind. The better we know and understand people from other parts of the globe, the less likely our international disagreements are to spin into dangerous conflict. The final purpose of the University of Michigan I want to share today is that of educating good citizens. I view the concept of citizenship as one of the qualities we have a sacred bond to teach as a top public university. Regardless of our students' academic major, we take very seriously the obligation to impart skills that capture the full spectrum of what people do as scientists, humanists, artists, leaders, and best. We work to cultivate the habits of mind and ability to be thoughtful, inquisitive, and critical while being sensitive to the perspectives of others. And we purposefully prepare students to be influential so that they can lead the way and have the greatest impact on our society. 
I hope to encourage students to mobilize their incredible range of interests and skills to foster engagement at every level as citizen graduates of the University of Michigan, as leaders in civil discourse in their community, and as voters. I know that many of the Rotarians I've met embrace the idea of service over self. Perhaps because of this conference and all of your ongoing work, we will better unite as global citizens. Perhaps one of the students joining us today will be the next physician to test a vaccine against a terrible disease, or implement an idea that advances the values of peace and justice around the world, or go overseas as a Fulbright scholar. As John Kennedy said in 1960, the answer to the question of whether a free people can compete depends on the willingness of our people not merely to serve one year or two years in the service, but on your willingness to contribute part of your life to this country. I want to thank all of you for coming together here at this conference. You're an inspiration to all of us who care about improving our world. And I'll leave you with a, two phrases. The first is go blue and the second is go peace. Thank you. Thank you very much.